if you have baby animals on your personal checks, if you rock a lot of polka dots, if you've touched glitter within the last 24 hours, then this comfort shows brought to you by the officially unofficial geek channel is probably for you. My name is Carrie Quinn. I'm the officially unofficial geek, and this is comfort shows. And today I'm asking you to join me in talking about one of my actual favorite shows, new girl. Um, new girl is a show that was on Fox TV for many seasons. New Girl was a show, like I said, on Fox television, and it was created by Elizabeth Merriweather and produced by 20th Century Fox. Like I said, it was on the Fox network, uh, and it aired from September 20th, 2011 to May 15th, 2018. So good long run. Um, the show is about a character named Jessica Day. She's played by Zoe Deschanel. Uh, a lot of you might know her from the movie Elf considering we're going into a uh, Christmas time, time period. Um, it follows Jessica after a breakup with her ex-boyfriend who cheated on her. In fact, she walked in on him cheating on her and she has to quick move out. So she ends up living with these three guys um, in a loft in Los Angeles. And those characters primarily end up being um, three or four guys. Um, so, they're all guys and there's the the pilot which has max excuse me uh max greenfield playing the character schmidt nick miller um is played by jake johnson and coach who is played by damon wayans jr yes that damon wayans jr yes father damon wayans on in living color so this guy has got comedy in his veins okay um, now that's just the pilot series uh the pilot episode which is really interesting because the pilot episode has Damon Wayans Jr. playing coach in it. But unfortunately, because of, um, you know, how much time it took for everything to come together involving New Girl, Damon Wayans Jr. ended up going to a different show um, on a different network. And then when it got picked up, they had to bring in someone else to take that spot from coach. And that would be the roommate Winston Bishop, played by Lamorne. Morris. Now, Lamorne Morris recently made news because he got the Emmy from being on that Fargo show on FX. He got the, the Best Supporting Character Emmy. Um, so congratulations to him. It's so awesome to see people from shows that I've loved previously to, you know, going on to other stuff and getting really successful. It's really cool. Um, so she moves in with them. So for most of the series, and, and actually Coach does come back later on, um, uh, played by still Damon Wayans Jr., um, and he comes back and, and lives in the loft again with everyone else for a while. And so the show is basically showing off, um, Jessica day, Jess day, um, kind of neg, uh, negotiating and navigating through post breakup with her boyfriend and getting to know and getting to real realize herself again with the help of her three roommates and her friend who is a regular character on the series, CC. And Cece is a uh, Jess's best friend from when she was a little girl uh, living in Portland. And Jess uh, and Cece um, have a very close relationship. And Cece um, is a model while Jess is a teacher. So it's kind of a, a, an interesting um, relationship there and, and how they relate to each other. And um, and the what's really interesting about that is, is and, and fun and funny is the reaction of her three male roommates to meeting her best friend who is a model and uh, the the hijinks that ensue involving that. And you've got some really um, fun, heartwarming and hilarious moments, even in that first episode um, where she is definitely post breakup and she's doing that whole thing where, um, you know, all those uh, stereotypical things that, that, that supposedly people do like, you know, crying at, you know, regular intervals of the day, you know, we've all been there. Okay. Um, watching Dirty Dancing on repeat, we've all been there. Um, and just various things like that, just not really wanting to leave the house and, and her three male roommates convince her to go on, get back out there and get herself a rebound. That is basically the premise of the first episode. And it's really great because it introduces us to the dynamic of what it's like with her and these three male roommates. Um, what I think is really cool and kind of what I want to focus on is the idea of, um, comedy character archetypes and and how they present themselves 
in a show like New Girl. Because if I'm going to tell you something go out to go out and watch something because it's going to make you fucking laugh, I want to make sure that I've got my T's crossed and my I's dotted, okay? Because this is a hilarious show, all right? I'm not going to steer you wrong, but let me give you an idea of um, what you're really getting into here with some of these characters. Uh, Screencraft.org uh, recently posted an article on Ma March 27th of 2024. It's within the last year. We can use it. Talking about the 10 character archetypes in comedies. And it breaks down the different character archetypes. And what's really interesting about New Girl is that what I think we'll find as we're discussing this is that there are major characters that fulfill more than one archetype in this series. Um, so let's kind of get into it. Let's let's do that. Let's go this route with comfort shows. Give it a little bit more, you know, a little bit more oomph, you know, a little bit more pizzazz to what I'm doing here and, and kind of give you something that's with a little bit more bite here. So let's talk about each of the different different. 10 character archetypes as posted by screencraft.org. That article is written by Ken Mayomoto. Mayomoto. Um, like I said, it posted um, March 27, 2024. I'll try to remember to put a, a, a link or information in the description of this video so you guys can check it out for yourself. Um, the first character archetype is the straight person. And um, Ken here describes the straight person as this character is the voice of reason during chaos, often playing off of more eccentric characters to create humorous situations. They're typically serious or normal, allowing the audience to relate to them amidst absurdity. Um, and they give some examples uh, such as Jason Bas Bateman in Arrested Development, um, Paul Rudd in I Love You Man, uh, Sandra Bullock in The Proposal, uh, ben Stiller um, in Meet the Parents, so on and so forth. Um, this is, when I think about this, I think about the person that's supposed to be straight laced, supposed to be the person that always goes to their job every day, always does everything. And I'm going to have to say that that is going to be the character of Schmidt in this in this story, even though he has his buffoon moments. Um, he's very much the idea, the 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 emphasis of, you know, I go to, to work every day. I do all these things. I'm going to kill, uh, not kill, but I'm going to, I'm going to win, win, win. And I'm always, you know, on the top of my game. I always have to be on the top of my game. And, and that would have to probably be Schmidt, even though, like I said, sometimes he has his moments as well. And sometimes these characters have like the, the they, they follow or they not necessarily follow, but they fulfill more than one archetype, which is really funny. Um, but let's go ahead and let's move on. We're going to go to the buffoon. The buffoon is the next uh, stereo, or, or excuse me, archetype, character archetype. Often clumsy uh, or foolish, this character gets into ridiculous situations through their ineptitude, providing physical comedy and slapstick humor. They're lovable and well-meaning, but their actions lead to com comedic disasters. And, you know, while everyone has their moments, I'm going to have to give this one to Nick Miller. Um, Nick Miller is the character played by Jake Johnson, and he is a character that the storyline, the backstory of Nick Miller goes that he went to college and he almost finished law school and he ended up not finishing law school. He ended up dropping out and becoming a bartender. And you find out different information related to that throughout watching the series, if you were going to take it on, um, that just kind of like he, he left college, became a bartender and he had every intention of becoming a mystery writer. Um, he wanted to write fiction. And he just never did it years later. He also has one of the most interesting character arcs, uh, you know, in the show. Him and Schmidt have two, like, really great character arcs. And they've got some examples here. Melissa McCarthy is Megan in Bridesmaids. Uh, Chris Farley is Tommy Callahan and Tommy Boy. Like, these kind of characters, yeah. I'm going to have to give it to Nick Miller on this one. The Snob. The snob is one of the archetypes in comedy that is pompous and looks down on others, often finding themselves in situations where their supposed superiority is undermined, leading to humor through their deserved fate. That, again, is going to have to go to Schmidt. Schmidt is one of those kind of characters that it's, he has such a, um, hmm, how do I put this? He, he, there's this, this running joke throughout the series of the douchebag jar. And whenever Schmidt does anything that's douchey, uh, they tell him he has to put money in the douchebag jar. So it's kind of like a swear jar, but for douchebags. Um, so what's really interesting is he, because he has that whole like idea of the straight man and how he's the straight man, the other characters around him um, mold that so that, yeah, he's not only the straight man, but he's also kind of a snob. What's really interesting though about Schmidt is that 
I look at him more like a Stifler character. So Stifler being, um, of course, if you're not aware, um, a character in Amer the American Pie movies, um, the main series movies, that everybody like always like thinks down on on Stifler and Stifler's a douche, right? But then, you know, all of every once in a while you find these little cracks in the surface and Stifler is like, like Schmidt. Schmidt has this heart to him. And they, they're they both very similar characters in that aspect. Schmidt might be a little bit less douchey than uh, Stifler, but there's that whole idea that, you know, I'm the best because I did this, this, and this, and I continue to do this, this, and this. And I'm what I say goes that kind of thing, the snobbish behavior. But you know what? Then he has to put a dollar in the douchebag jar. So um, <laughs> that's kind of, you know, um, the the kind of the comeuppance that you, you get um, humor um, through their desired fate, you know, that kind of thing. So, but what's really interesting about the character Schmidt is that the character grows so much over the course of the entire series to the point where that that's still a little bit there, um, but not even close to what it used to be, you know, in the beginning of the series. Next archetype is the eccentric. Number four archetype is the eccentric. Wildly un unconventional and quirky, the eccentric brings humor through their odd behaviors, strange inventions, or unconventional solutions to problems. That I'm going to give to Jessica Day. This is a woman that at one point in the series, especially in the first um, season, makes the comment that when she's not getting along um, with one of the guy's girlfriends, she confronts her about it. And she says, kind of like what I said in the beginning of the video, you know, her checks have baby animals on them. She rocks a lot of polka dots. She, you know, breaks for squirrels and she, you know, has touched glitter within the last 24 hours. Um, and she sings to herself all the time. Um, she's, you know, unbelievably quirky and a little bit zany and, and just is this thing that takes these three men and turns their life upside down just by her presence. And it makes them understand and discover things about themselves that they didn't realize before just by being herself. And the characters um, that the, that Ken here in the article picks to describe the eccentric is Mike Myers as Austin Powers, uh, Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka and Kate McKinnon as weird Barbie in the Barbie movie. The trickster. Our next category is the trickster. Clever and mischievous, this character loves to play pranks and manipulate situations for their amusement, often causing chaos for both the characters and the plot. Now, there's one particular character in the show that that has a big problem with pranks in that he never knows what's too much or too little. He never gets the pranks just right. And that's Winston Bishop. We're going to go ahead and we're going to give this one to Winston Bishop. And if you were to watch um, uh, New Girl, at any you know length, you would see that um, he is clever and mischievous. He's probably the most clever out of all of them, um, and just because of his uh, his pretense for not being able to do pranks correctly, we're going to give that one to him. Um, the sixth character archetype that Ken mentions here in his article is the slob. And he says, unlike other archetypes and comedies, the slob doesn't conform to conventionally acceptable standards of behavior or morals leading to hilariously awkward situations, especially when contrasted with the more refined settings or characters that we're going to have to give to Nick Miller. Nick Miller um, just in and in, in his overall you know, ability to just out of nowhere, come up with something completely weird. He has, and, and one of the episodes of the first season, he has this, um, this list of things that he has fixed in the apartment when really what that means is he has like, he has rigged them to the point where they're not completely fixed, but you have to do like, you have to do certain things where like you have to like pull on a, you know, on something or other to get like the drain to go down or, or, you know, you have to, you know, stick a, a, a stick in the, the garb, uh, garbage disposal to get it to work and, and, you know, all non-conventional things rather than actually just fixing the problem. Um, yeah, that's Nick Miller. Um, but he's definitely one of those ones that everybody talks about, you know, he doesn't take care of himself. He drinks too much. Um, you know, he had so much potential, but he became a bartender. Like, and, and he has all these moments where he has a lot of social anxiety. So it's hard for him to function in, in social situations. Um, he doesn't like, there's moments where he has to go to like fancy restaurant and he's just like, where is everybody? I don't know what fork I want to stab myself with. Um, that is very much Nick Miller. And there's some examples that um, Ken gives here as Zach Galifianakis as um, Alan Gardner in The Hanover. 
Yeah. Um, Seth Rogen as Ben Stone in Knocked Up and John Belushi as John Bluto um, in National Lampoon's Animal House. So if you've ever seen any of those movies and you watch New Girl, you can definitely connect Nick Miller to that character archetype. Number seven, The Cynic. Sarcastic and often pessimistic, the cynic of, uh, del delivers dry wit and humorous observations about the absurdity of situations and the naivete of other characters. We're going to have to give that one to Nick Miller again because he is definitely um, contrasting Jessica Day's the eccentric character archetype um, because she definitely has the na naivete and he has the whole cynic, you know, like old dude before he was an old dude, get, get off my lawn kind of attitude. And and one of the 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 comments that gets made by Cece in um, that first season of New Girl is that Jessica Day in, and Nick Miller are like, um, she are like Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau. And that's very much true. If you've ever watched any Jack Lemon, Walter Matthau movies, and you can look at the two of them and be like, oh yeah, that's definitely two conflicting character archetypes that work together because of how much they contrast with each other. And that's one of the parts that's actually really great about those two characters um, interacting with each other. The naive optimist, unfailingly positive and sometimes blissfully unaware of the reality around them. This character's optimistic viewpoint leads to humorous contrast with more cynical or realistic characters. That's going to have to, again, be if you're going to make the eccentric separate. And the <clears throat> let me get something to drink here. Ooh. The eccentric and the naive optimist seem like they're very similar. I'm going to say that right up front and say that it is Jessica Day. And what's really funny is Zoe Deschanel plays Jess Day, as I mentioned. And one of the examples that they gave is Will Ferrell and, uh, as Buddy the Elf and Elf. Um, they also talk about, you know, characters like Margot Robbie as Barbie in Barbie. And let's go ahead and let's move on next to the underdog. This is caricature. Number nine, compared to the other archetypes in comedies, the underdog is easy to root for. And they're often at a disadvantage, but use wit, guile, and sheer determination to overcome obstacles, providing feel good humor. And we're going to give that one to Winston. Um, Winston Bishop, when he enters into the show, he used to play um, professional basketball in another country, not like, like another country, like we're talking England. No, it was like another country, like made up country name kind of country. Okay. Um, so he played professional basketball in another country. Um, he gets an injury, he comes back, and he has to try and figure out how he's going to navigate, kind of like how Jess is navigating life after this horrible breakup. Winston's navigating life after breaking off with playing basketball. And and he has to try to figure out where he, you know, his life is going to lead. And he has many different ideas um, throughout the series of what he's going to do. And he's trying to find himself and he's really kind of coming in at a disadvantage, even to, you know, other characters that seem like they don't necessarily have it together because he has no job. He has no idea what he wants to do. Even Nick Miller, who gets ragged on enough because he should have been a lawyer, um, he has a job that he enjoys. He enjoys being a bartender. But you have Winston, who is there, and he's at a slight disadvantage. So, um, and throughout the series, you really get to see Winston grow. You get to see all the characters grow, but Winston, um, just finding himself and finding who he wants to be and where he wants to be is actually pretty awesome to see that develop in him throughout the whole entire series, trying to figure himself out and what he wants to do. Number 10, the last archetype here is the fish out of water. This archetype is perhaps the most common in comedies. Why? Because the more conflict a protagonist in a comedy faces, the more chances there are to showcase the hilarity and humor in those difficult situations. Thrown into a situation or environment foreign to them, this character's attempt to adapt and understand their new world lead to comedic misunderstandings and cultural flow pause. We're going to give this one to Jessica Day because she's coming into this and she's going to go live with three grown men after a breakup, trying to figure out how to deal with that whole scenario and reintroducing herself to life, basically, as a single woman. Um... That I think, yeah, I think that would fit Jess Day. I didn't really put Cece um, in any of these um, archetypes, but I think one of the archetypes that might possibly be missing from this is 
is just the character archetype of the best friend. Um, this is the person that comes in is kind of like the the bridge between the new situation and the old, where not even necessarily that, the new situation and the new world, right? The bridge from that person to the new world. Um, and that's kind of what Cece does for Jess. She's she's the person that is there primarily for that character in, in helping her kind of bridge herself over to this new world. Um, so yeah, that is the character archetypes of a comedy applied to New Girl. Um, let me know, guys, if you like kind of this whole like, like let's apply this to something else um, kind of concept in the videos. I really appreciate you guys, guys watching this video. Um, that's about it for talking about New Girl. Um, you can find New Girl, you can find season one, I believe, on Hulu, and the rest of it you can find on Peacock. Um, that's where I watched a lot of it. So, um, of course, you can also rent it from your local library, probably on DVD and or probably Blu-ray. Um, I don't know for sure. But this is definitely a show that like when I say comfort shows, I mean it like you're going back and it's the kind of stuff that you revisit all the time because it makes you feel good. And for me personally, just the characters of New Girl speak to me. I remember a long time ago when New Girl first came out and I remember people being like, oh my God, Carrie, it's like Jessica Day is like somebody opened up your social media or started following you in life because you sing to yourself a lot. You rock, you know, weird patterns. You uh, like glitter stuff. You, you know, like you sing to yourself a lot um, in random situations. And, you know, people would say, you know, this is, this is kind of like you, Carrie. Um, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and then I remember watching New Girl and like being in like these couple really, like really horrible relationships um, with horrible men. Um, and just sitting there and being like, I want a guy like Nick Miller, who might be just not the ideal person for most people, but I think somebody like that is ideal for me. Um, and I remember putting that out into the world being like, I would love to find a guy like Nick Miller. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I found a guy like Nick Miller. Um, <laughs> I all the time, like, especially like rewatching some of these shows to talk about them. And I watched New Girl and a bunch of episodes to get me into doing this. And, and, and I look at the character of Nick Miller, especially, and I see my boyfriend. I see the person I asked the, the universe to send me. Um, <laughs> like, I swear to God, like the other day, guys, there's this thing, this joke that, um, she says that Nick Miller, uh, Jessica Day says Nick Miller makes a turtle face when he's upset about something or when he's judging something, when he's being judgy. And he's just like, and he just does it and he doesn't even realize it. The other day, like Joe is reading something. My boyfriend is reading something and he's got this serious look on his face and his face just kind of goes into the turtle. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He's just like, he he always existed. He always, he existed before New Girl, obviously. Um, but it was like, yeah, I asked for Nick Miller and I got him. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so, I mean, if you were to watch New Girl, you would understand probably why. Um, he is Walter Matthau and I am girl Jack Lemmon. Um, <laughs> Get, get us in a situation where you just get to observe us. And yeah, he is Walter Matthau and I am girl Jack Lemon, as Jess Day says in the first season of New Girl. Um, but yeah, this is, I just, I look at it and I remember thinking to myself, like, if I can find a guy like Nick Miller, that would be great. And I still see it today. Um, but anyways, um, you know what? That's about it for this episode. Um, I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do for the next episode. So I'm going to keep that close to my, close to me, close to me. Um, I think I'm due. I gotta get, I gotta get you guys a episode of the super geek documentary hour. Cause I haven't done one in a little bit. And you guys kind of like when I talk about documentaries. Um, and there is a new documentary. It's supposed to be a multi-part documentary. So I'm not sure I'll do this one next, but 
I am going to say that there is one about Ted Turner that came on to Max recently. It started on Max recently that I think I might get into and I might do. So guys, as always, until next time, this has been Comfort Shows with the Officially Unofficial Geek channel. As always, my name is Carrie. I'm the Officially Unofficial Geek. And until next time, keep your eyes and ears open. If you see something, say something. And remember the complacent, never make a difference. So go out there and make a difference. Until next time, I'll be seeing ya. Bye.